Third up on our list is Roger Moore's movie, The Man with the Golden Gun, came out in 1974, and for those who don't know the Rotten Tomatoes scores, this one's a little bit lower. 45% for the tomato meter, the critic side of things, and 57 for the audience score. I'm flat out going to say it right now, though. Out of the three movies that we've already talked about so far, Man with the Golden Gun is so much more entertaining, and I yes, love this movie. Yes, thank you. You know, this is one of those movies I... I liked a lot when I first got into the Bond series, and I I fully acknowledge it is ridiculous in some ways, but rewatching it this time, I rewatched them in order, and uh, You Only Live Twice, I was hoping I would like it more. Didn't like it as much as I did before. On Her Majesty's Secret Service, I was really hoping that there was something that I would have been missing out on before and I would grow to appreciate it. Still hate the movie. Man with the Golden Gun, I was worried that I wasn't going to like it. I still like this movie. It's ridiculous, but it's fun. And I know that Alex isn't the biggest fan of it, so Alex, hit me with your uh, your opinion <laughs> overall, your first impressions of this movie. I definitely agree with you. It's a super entertaining film. Uh, Christopher Lee is one of the most memorable of all Bond villains. I can't get past J.R. Pepper vacationing in Thailand. <laughs> That's the worst part. <laughs> These I, Democrats, Maybell. <laughs> I can suspend my disbelief, um, but that tests it for me. Also, the flying car. Um, mm. This kind of—I mean, if we were going to describe *You Only Live Twice* as cartoony, this is the film that really begins the sort of Roger Moore's downward spiral into <laughs> ridiculousness. And it's so weird because half of it is so serious. The other half is utter nonsense. <laughs> it's true. It starts off as a gripping thriller, you know, even with a psychological element. Mm -hmm. And then you start getting into, uh, well, well, we'll get into that, actually. <laughs> Caroline, what was your first impression? Because this is the first time you've ever seen Man with the Golden Gun, right? Yes. Uh, first impression was I was so excited to see Christopher Lee, so young, waving around his gun. Uh, and he's not even young in this either. He's still like sixty in it or something. Yeah. <laughs> he's so young to me because I'm so used to seeing Christopher Lee as you 105. Know. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I mean, it was it was a fun movie. Sometimes I felt like I was even watching like Austin Powers a little bit just because <laughs> it was just so out there. But I definitely yes. enjoyed it. <laughs> It's a, it is totally out there. This is one of the most out there Bond films. From the crazy fun house that opens it, the flying car at the end of it. <laughs> the flying car is awesome. <laughs> there are so many notes here. I'm going to try to breeze through my own stuff to get you guys to talk about and mess up. But let's talk about J.W. Pepper. More specifically, let's talk about the elephants. How much would you pay for one of those elephants? <laughs> I would not pay... 60 baht. Would you, in any circumstance, pay 20,000 baht? I mean, that's far too many baht for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that little kid. It's so stupid. 20,000 baht! <laughs> what, what did you think about that scene, Carol? <laughs> Aw, it was kind of cute. <laughs> pretty lady, pretty lady. <laughs> Oh, it made me it made me think of Brazil. <laughs> That's so wrong. Oh man, I'm gonna get so much hate from this. Well, I fully agree with you, Alex. J.W. Pepper is absolutely fucking ridiculous in this, and completely unnecessary. I mean, they were clearly trying to just make him like the new Felix Leiter. Like. You know, if well, let's try to throw out like a more comedic person, have him a, a sidekick kind of a thing. If you would have taken him out, I think it's kind of in the same boat as if you were to take Jar Jar Binks out of the Phantom Menace. You would have a definitely have a different movie, and it would make a huge difference. He is one of the most fun people to quote, though. And I mean, they, they, we talk about the racism and stuff like that at some of the other movies and stuff. Like, that guy's not <laughs> holding anything back. You pony heads! Right. 
I mean, who, who, with, you know, with what audiences did he test well? <laughs> How did it go through numerous, you know, drafts of a script? They bring him back. They enter into contract negotiations. He's got all this leverage. You know, they want him back. They're going to give him millions of dollars to be in this. One. How did this happen? How did this get through so many otherwise sensible minds? It had to be the South. Had to be. <laughs> I mean, they flat out say in this one, I gotta get me one of them cute little elephants. Well, these Democrats. <laughs> and it's just all, you know, I oh, never thought oh, of oh, your ass. <laughs> it had to have been that. It had to have been just like, well, Bond is so snooty and upper class. Let's get this real working class southern Louisiana type of guy, you know. Like, peace officer. He's a peace officer. Yeah, peace officer. He's terrible. But he's not only, like, the only weird thing that happens in this. We have uh, one of the little sidekick kind of people of him. Not not necessarily the little one. We'll talk about him in a minute. Um, but one of Bond's allies is Hip. And he, on his own, is fine. Although, uh, I argue he should have died. I think that he should have been killed at some point. <laughs> Just you because... Feel- <laughs> yeah, he deserved it. Well, see, one of those things in these Bond films that I think is something that should carry over to almost every one of them is that there should be somebody on the ally side that gets killed. And uh, we've got, like, you only live twice, they kill Aki. And in, say, like, um, you know, you go with, like, Goldfinger. Uh, they make a point to, like, kill some of the, the villains and stuff to make it seem like, well, even the villain sidekicks can get killed off and whatever. We'll talk about License to Kill. I mean, that's, like, <laughs> a bunch of people get killed in that one and stuff. I think Hip being killed could have been a good scene to be, like, to up the ante. But they wouldn't have killed him off if they had introduced these stupid characters of his nieces. What was up with the nieces? Again, a totally insane decision that you wonder how it got past these people. Um, they're basically there to fill up space to to I don't know I don't know if it's being played for a laugh or no, what definitely. I'm supposed to think of it. The music even uh, points out that it's a laugh because it changes and it's just that do 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 yeah that's true. Like they pick up the watermelon and hit the guy over the head with it. It was just like you take out the nieces, you kill hip. Take out J.W. Pepper. And Hip's not even really that good either. He ditches Bond. Yeah, that's why I was going to say, I mean, you could kill him, but would it really make any difference? I mean, he's basically like a paper doll in the film. You don't get to know him at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, speaking of the music that goes to different scenes, what do you think about that? I love I love the music in this one. Apparently, uh, a lot of people hate it. I think it's fantastic. I We talked about the droning kind of things from some of the other things. Even though it's a little bit droning, the song that plays when Hip is taking Bond to CM, that like bum bum bum, ba da 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 da, bum bum da, I love that music, and it goes into that bang dun 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 kind of thing. That's so much better than the kind of stuff that's in like you only love twice, where it's just kind of like, all right, why don't we play chopsticks? <laughs> yeah. The score is it, it is it is pretty good. The song, on the other hand, the title song, mm. leaves me wanting a little more. Uh... It's not the strongest Bond theme. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I'd like to uh, recite some of the lyrics if I could here. <laughs> Please do. Yeah, he's got a powerful weapon. He's got a powerful gun. <laughs> it's not. <what> it is. <laughs> if you want to get rid of someone, the man with the golden gun. We'll get it done. Right. I knew that you were going to bring up this line because we've been joking about this line for 20 years now. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, it's one of the things that it, it all right, like Man with the Golden Gun's not not a great Bond theme, but it's something that I don't mind listening to. And if I do listen to it, the fact that we've joked about this so much, I picture the lyrics in my mind of being, he's got a powerful weapon, he's got a powerful gun. <laughs> but... <laughs> The real <laughs> lyrics are actually pretty decent for that part. And I specifically wrote that down so I could give it credit. <laughs> I love the line, an assassin that's second to none, the man with the golden gun. That's good. <laughs> Some of the other stuff's really kind of bad, you know. Uh, like, uh, who who shall he bang? Who will <laughs> bang? We shall see. Uh, what's the part where she says something about um, crouched on a rooftop somewhere? 
and she says it like really fast because she can't get it all in. It's like crash out of rooftop stop somewhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it's all better than that alternative song that Alice Cooper tried to do. That one's terrible. Uh, I don't know that one. It's just anybody who's listening to this, go listen to the Alice Cooper one at the end of this one and you'll see what I mean. It, it's really bad. I don't even remember how it goes because I had listened to it recently and it's that bad that I forgot about it. But I will bring up that the the Man with the Golden Gun theme, as weird as it is, it works really well in the score. It's very, Definitely. like... Yeah. I agree. Like, it's very calm and stuff, but it can also be a little bit imposing. Like, there's that one shot where Scaramanga is putting the gun up to uh, Andrea's mouth, and it's playing in oh the background. Oh my god. I was the oh my god for was it like oh my god this is awesome or oh my god no it's just like when I was watching that scene all I could think about was and I already mentioned this in another podcast but I had this teacher in college who everything in a horror movie was about black dicks and all I could think about in this movie was that the gun was actually an analogy to his penis. So he's like shooting people with it. He's like showing his gun off. He's making right. it longer. He's making it shorter. He's putting it on her face. Like that was all I could think about. <laughs> so that Definitely. was why I said, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, and the lyrics of the song totally back you up. And <laughs> he's got a powerful song. weapon. <laughs> <laughs> but wait golden. a second. How did the black dicks play a role in this? Oh, no, it's just because he reminded me of my, my instructor. Everything about horror movies was black dicks, like everything. Then, and then when I saw this movie, I was like, oh, my God, I'm turning into him. It's about gold dicks. It's about gold golden dicks. dicks. Golden the man with dicks the golden gold dicks. showers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll stop. <laughs> well, they do say that, I mean, he's got that third nipple, which is going to be a sign of oh great God, sexual then... prowess. <laughs> oh, this, this is ridiculous. Like, from top to bottom of this film. Yeah. That, that third nipple thing was totally unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> it's so dumb. It looked like gum, like, stuck in his chest. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> Another weird thing about this, though, I want to get back to Scary Manga a little bit later, but I want to keep this uh, on the topic of stupid things. Uh, <laughs> high Fat. Really, his name is High Fat. <laughs> uh, a bit of trivia about that. Apparently, in an early draft of the script, he was a, he had a twin brother. I'm not making this up. Had a twin brother named Low Fat. Aww. Well, see, then they wanted to change it up, and they were like, well, maybe he won't be his twin brother. Maybe they'll be just partners, and he can be Low Cal. <laughs> I think they went with Low Main. <laughs> Well, the janitor in the background, a uh, little known fact, he's actually low maintenance. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, a weird, stupid thing in High Fat's situation. The statue scene is ridiculous. Where they, they come alive? Yeah, they, that was clearly some kind of like writer's room note where they're like, wouldn't it be funny in a Bond film if statues came alive and tried to kill them? They're and all it high. Out it's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we they tried it, it turns out. Incidentally, um, with Man with the Golden Gun, uh, the sumo wrestling scene, we've watched every Bond film featuring a sumo wrestling scene. Well, because there's only the two of them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, for a second, like, oh my god, maybe I fell asleep in more movies. <laughs> right, I was sitting there going, I don't like, is that more? This and, you know. I don't remember this in Casino Royale. <laughs> Sumo wrestling scene in Skyfall, remember? Remember? Oh, Sumo awesome. Royale is what we were watching, right? What do you guys think about Nick Knack? Um, they never explain why he has a French accent. It's just because the actor does. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like, did, you know, do you think the casting director was like, well, we need a guy who's three foot six, but. He's got to have a French accent, too. <laughs> so they had to have seen him in Fantasy Island and just were like, this this guy's got to be in here. Yeah. Right away, Miss Yell Scalmunga. If you kill him, all this be mine. Ha ha, I fooled you. <laughs> I love the peanut scene. He's eating the little peanuts. 
Yeah. He's got I the mean, tiny little yeah. gun. Like it's, <laughs> it just peanuts. reminds me of Mini Me, like Austin Powers. I just can't. I I love it, but it's just it's so. I don't want to say bizarre because that's <laughs> not the word that I'm looking for. It's it's over the top, but God bless him. I I like him there. How stupid though is that end fight? Like the movie has this good climax of a situation and then they just go to the boat and it suddenly knickknack is chucking bottles of wine or something yeah, I don't know what kind of damage he thought he was going to do and <laughs> in terms of Bond putting him in a suitcase I understand that it would have been kind of like cold blooded or whatever bad PR if Bond had killed a little person you know but I think it's more humiliating to pack him into a suitcase <laughs> I don't know. Well, I mean, let's just consider the fact that we have a guy waving around a golden penis in this movie. I feel like they don't care. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> and I, I mean, in the past, we had Sean Connery slapping bitches around and racism everywhere. So it's just kind of like, oh, okay, yeah, let, let's just stuff a little person <laughs> in the suitcase. Right. I have a theory about Nick Knack, and I'm almost 100% positive that this is just total truth. So if it's not, I would be utterly shocked. Anybody who's played the GoldenEye video game for N64, not the remake, fuck that thing, <laughs> Oddjob is in there, and he's for some reason the shortest character, but Oddjob himself is not short. I think that these people got confused between Nick Knack and Oddjob. Interesting. Hmm, maybe. They look somewhat similar. I mean, clearly, Nick Knack looks more like Oddjob than Jaws. They're both wearing the tuxes and that kind of a thing. I think that that's what ended up creating that issue. So that's where the no Oddjob rule comes from. Nick Knack. Any thoughts on Lazar and that crotch shot? It's too <laughs> low. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I'm not the only one that noticed that. <laughs> and I'm glad I'm not the one that brought it up. <laughs> I thought that that was funny, but I actually the, a note that I have written down before that, which I thought was even funnier than uh, than anything with like Lazar itself, is just when he's trying to figure out if that's Lazar's place, and he talks to a woman and her kids. I'm assuming and he's just kind of like Lazar. And they're just staring at him, whatever, like that. And then it's like, oh, okay, he's in the back or whatever. They go back to eating their noodles, and they do it super quick. It's like, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> it once too. Yeah. I, I mean, it's a, it's very it's very strange. I noticed that <laughs> they all stop eating at the same time, and then when they start eating again, they all start eating at the same time and just chowing down. Like those noodles must be awesome. <laughs> I think Maybe it was low main. <laughs> there was no the low main guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, one more just unusual thing is this: the only film where Bond swallows a really important piece of evidence. And then has to shit it out and have it <laughs> Oh, God. The nearest pharmacy. Oh, you wouldn't believe the trip it took to get here. <laughs> Pretty sure it is. I don't remember him shitting out anything in, like, Octopussy. <laughs> <laughs> Even though it wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> He's, like, inside the alligator. <laughs> taking a shit. Right. Roger Moore had become incontinent at the time anyway. <laughs> So I'm going to bounce back to Scaramanga here. I think he's one of the best Bond villains. And if not, just for one of his lines in the movie, one of my favorite lines in the whole thing, ours is the loneliest profession. Oh, That's deep, man. Mm -hmm. Like, Scaramanga, he's going to kill Bond now. And uh, he could easily just shoot him. And he could have shot him at the Bottoms Up Club, which I thought was hilarious. Or on the island or anything like that. But the fact that he says it's a lonely profession and he wants to, like, I get the impression, and I don't know if they really wanted to go this far with it or whatever, but it's almost like he wants to be buddies. Could be. He's a Bond fanboy. He definitely, when Bond first comes to the island, Christopher Lee, almost giddy to see him. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, we're going to make you mushrooms and stuff, and let me show you my plan, and this is, isn't this gun awesome, dude? Like, he's, he's <laughs> trying to get his validation, you know? 
I like that about it. It's something different. This is like a cold-hearted assassin that has this like ridiculous uh, credentials to him and stuff like that. And yet with Bond, he's just sort of like, dude, totally broing it up. <laughs> Nobody wants to be lonely. Aww. All he has is knickknack and the dude with the well. mustache. <laughs> the black dude with the mustache, you mean? Yeah, the one who has no line other than, ah! <laughs> yeah, I made two notes about the man with the golden gun, and that was one of them. Um, the creepy black guy who's always checking out Goodnight. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame him. Yeah, but I mean, it's a weird, like, he's a weird presence, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. This menacing, hulking, silent figure that just checks out the lady until he dies. Do you think he was written in there for her to kill him? So she didn't look like, like a total idiot bimbo the entire time? Yeah, and uh, hardly worked. Yeah. Even she says that she's weak when she has sex with Bond. She's like, well, you know, when are we going to get together? And he's just like, whenever. And then she's like, all right. <laughs> Caroline, what did you think about Mary Goodnight? Uh, just kind of what I feel, uh, what I think about most of the Bond girls. Just, just pretty. Who's better, her or Chew Me? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Love that name. Yeah, I'll give her extra points for her name. Um, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. I think <laughs> bye. -bye. Uh, <laughs> we have two... had better lines. She may have better lines. <laughs> <laughs> We do have two other women that stood out to me. The belly dancer, uh, I've lost my charm, not from where I'm standing. I love that. It's such a Bond thing for a woman to have a bullet from a dead double O agent in her stomach. I love that. Belly yeah, dancer herself cool. I'm not a big fan of, but I love the idea that, like, double O two, poor Bill, gets shot, and she goes like, oh, I want to put this bullet in my belly button. It's my lucky charm, like... <laughs> I would yeah. do that. The belly dancer sort of has a MILF vibe going on. <laughs> if anything. Alex, did you ever read The Man with the Golden Gun? No, I didn't. And it, it the original novel has a storied past. I mean, I think it was left uncompleted when Fleming died. Um, somebody finished it on his behalf, and they tried to cover it up as if it had been finished. Um, but it's sort of an outlier among the uh, uh, Fleming's original Bond novels. I don't think I have any more notes about the belly dancer, but I do have quite a bit of notes about Andrea Anders. Alex, you had sent me a message. You said that you weren't really that into her. Nah. I am the total opposite spectrum. I think she's beautiful. I love her character in a lot of different ways because she's that standard uh, girlfriend of the villain and as i mentioned before uh that i thought that hip should have been killed she gets killed mm -hmm. it's a good way to show that scaramanga is willing to just kill anybody kind of a thing even her and he's so proud about it too i love that it's just like well it was a difficult shot but you know most rewarding or whatever he says like uh but my favorite part of this entire movie without a doubt is the shower scene and the stuff that follows it. The musical cue in that alone is amazing. I love that. It's so eerie. And it's weird to see Roger Moore act like Sean Connery, kind of. Connery is, you know, this real abusive asshole Bond. Uh -huh. And in this part, Roger Moore, he actually said he didn't like filming the scene and he thought that he should have charmed the information out of her. But he grabs her arm and he says she says you're hurting my arm and he says i'll break it if you don't talk and then he slaps her because it's like you know she's not talking enough and whatever like that and uh the the lines that he throws out there she says about you know he's got the uh, third nipple and he says well that might be the most useless information yet unless it's a strip club and he's performing and he follows it up afterward with 
he might use one of those golden bullets on you, and that would be a pity. They're very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're very expensive. That's the most passive-aggressive line in the whole monologue. He's such an ass. <laughs> I love it, though. I think that it's, like, a good, like, a good character moment between those two. And, uh, again, I mentioned the musical cue in that is so good. Uh, just, that's easily my favorite part of this whole movie. Um... What did you guys think about that? Did that stand out to you guys as anything, or is that just like another scene? I mean, she's definitely damaged goods mm -hmm. in as much as she admits that Scaramanga uses her when he wants to, you know, that she's a kept woman. Um, he's only after it, he kills, though. What's that? Only, or is it after or only before he kills? I don't remember. I thought it was before but then he comes in after in the film and and rubs up on her with the guy you like that gold dick <laughs> right the big gold dicks yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i'm glad I, I i got that point across <laughs> but it does it is it is un, uncharacteristic and unusual for roger moore he plays on uh you know like manipulation in this scene and and more than like I can any of other interaction he had with a with a Bond girl, he's kind of conniving and manipulative. It's it's a very dark relationship between the two. Did you like that kind of side of the things, Caroline? I did, just because like I get sick of the funny guy all the time. Uh, just want to say that I am not pro <laughs> violence oh, no, women none of us are, at all. No, that's not but, what I'm trying to get yeah, across no, here. That's know, not why it's awesome. <laughs> no, I know, yeah, but I know. I, I, I'm just saying that because I know that sometimes I come across as a crazy person who enjoys violence a lot. It's no, not I the case. It's daring to take a tough position like that in today's society. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to bounce to a couple different things here. Actually, before I do, I want to just throw it out there. Andrea Anders coming back and playing another Bond woman in uh, Octopussy, the titular one. Eh, she doesn't hold up as much. Titular? Yeah. See what I did there? Yeah. I did. <laughs> I'm glad somebody caught that. Um, the Golden Gun itself, it's really one of our only gadgets here. We talked about the airplane car, which is ridiculous. And uh, that stunt jump with the little whistle... That they actually said afterward that they regretted doing, thankfully. It's such a shame. I mean, that is one of the most amazing stunts. They did it entirely, you know, in real time, with real cars, real stuntmen. I read, I think on the Wikipedia page, like 50 years later, not 50 years, but like relatively recently, they tried to restage that stunt, couldn't do it. Um, it was that difficult, that impossible seeming, and basically ruined Mm -hmm. by this ridiculous kid's toy whistle. <laughs> but what do you guys think about the golden gun? Does it <laughs> well, make any sense that that's a gun? It's like a cigarette lighter and stuff? It's a powerful weapon. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I stick with my my theory that it's just... It's a... And you know what is funny? Is that in Persian culture... Um, Moms call their their kid their boys dicks like uh like golden treasure or something like that. <laughs> um and it's it's like a good thing. It's like they're so proud they have a boy, so they just like they cherish it. Um so that's I don't know, it just makes me think of that. I, I like that it's a gun. I feel like it would be too in your face of a penis reference if it was a knife. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a couple more things I have here. How the fuck does that casino game work? <laughs> They're like bringing drawstring stuff down and whatever. Yeah, you, you put your money into a uh, cup that someone then just takes from you. That, <laughs> yeah, it's that, the worst, <laughs> the worst the game house, ever. The house always wins. It's a losing game. It's like that scene in Mafia where they're making fun of the casino stuff and it's the one game you absolutely cannot win and the people put the money down and he goes oh, I'm sorry you lost. <laughs> uh, a couple funny lines here. Ooh, surprise! I love that. The little hotel guy. Who would have to pay me killed? Jealous husbands, humiliated tailors. <laughs> <laughs> and um, 
actually not a funny part, but actually something I want to bring out to my last little note here. The duel. I love the idea that this came down to just a standard duel. It's not like stuff really having to go crazy. There's no like, well, I mean, there are explosions and stuff, but like Bond's not taking on a hundred people. It's just, it's him and one guy. It's different. I wish they had fought the duel like right there on the beach rather than going into the house of horrors. Hmm. It was, I mean, it's such a tense scene. I thought, you know, it was really going to come down to the better marksman, but Caroline, any thoughts about the duel? I, I, I was actually going to say that I liked that he was in the house of horrors, but now the way Alex puts it, I guess it makes, it makes sense what he says. I feel like some of the tension was cut once they moved it. Um, but I just like the House of Wars because it's such a fun <laughs> setting. Ow, ow. <laughs> so we're going to go around our final thoughts on this. Any things that we didn't mention yet in the zero to 10? Alex, you're up first. Yeah, I wonder if uh, when they wrote the music, when Scaramanga had the music installed for that um, Al Capone, when Al Capone in the, in the Fun House comes out and plays the man with the golden gun theme, like, <laughs> did, did he know that's his theme or did he hear it somewhere? And I, I could go, I could go for that. Um, you know, it's memorable villain, memorable villain, beautiful locations. Um, Bond Island? James Bond Island. I mean, a sensible choice for a Bond film. <laughs> Uh, a couple weak spots. We talked about the flying car, J.R. Pepper. I give it a 5 out of 10. Caroline? Uh, let's see. I guess, like, the only thing we, we haven't mentioned yet, it's the uh, scenes with Q and how, like, silly they are. Oh, um, shut up, Q. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I do enjoy them. Um... I definitely had way more fun in this movie than the previous one, so I think I'm gonna give it a five as well. I'm because give it a you six. need. Oh. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was just gonna say because it's exactly like we were talking about how like it starts kind of serious and then it just goes berserk. So it's kind of like you 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 can either see that as a really good thing or you can just be kind of upset that it just didn't go throughout Siri serious or funny all the way through. So the five is good. Uh, as I interjected there at the wrong <laughs> side, I'm getting it a six. I do think this is like one of the more fun movies and stuff. So uh, if you could get past the silly stuff and whatever, I recommend that for sure. Uh, we got three more Bond films coming your way, guys. License to Kill is up next. Click on part four.